going to give you some really quick examples from my server. Spoiler warning. At the very beginning of my game, I spawn the player inside a building. Because this is more like a linear narrative and not so much, you know, super hardcore survival, I, I want, you know, there's, there's elements of this game. You can buy materials. Um, so I've made it a little more... Uh, I've just made the mechanics of the game a little bit different. Right? So, but I, when you start out, you can interact with this guy. Now, initially it was just an audio voice line, but because of the dialogue system, I've been able to add uh, things like uh, giving the player stuff, right? So I have written and used AI to record-ish uh, the story, kind of background story for my server. And here I give the option to play the audio or you can just read it. Right? Or you can have both. So here's the audio. Many moons ago, Valheim was Remember, first this is local. By this is not all across unavoidably in my ears no matter where there, I go. So if I walk away from this, worthy of a place in Valhalla. it's not a problem, right? Again and again. Now, the other thing is you can stop this audio by clicking on the NPC again. If you use the play sound option here, if you click on it, it will stop the audio. Not as before, if you use it in quest events, that audio is unavoidable. You can't turn it off, but this you can. So I give the option to listen, to read, or if both. So that's what they look like. We've got play sound, command just play sound for the first one. We've got command open UI and info, the story so far. That's my info profile with all the text. And then I want to hear the story and listen to the narration. Command. I have both of them. So you can do all these commands. You can do all the commands at once if you want to. Um, and then here I have the two icons. The first one does not have an icon, right? Verger key and club. And you can see what they look like here. And there you go. That's that. So over here with this guy, I was playing with the color for morality choices. So yellow for good, red for bad, kind of keeping it pretty simple. And then white for neutral or whatever. So here I've kind of got the beginnings of that with yes, you know, is it, I can give you something to start your first quest. Do you have something for me? I guess what's in it for me and no way I don't need any help. I'm a pro. Now I've got different choices, different responses. So here I've got the transition to this greeting. And then once you click on, do you have something for me? It says, great, you can accept the quest. So here's the next line. Great. You can accept my quest. What do you think? I can also read some narration for you. Now I've given the player the choice. I'll take the supplies and leave. I don't want to hear the narration. Let me hear the narration and take the supplies or just leave. Right? So the reason I've done it like this is because I didn't want anyone to cheese the system. Basically get the supplies over and over again. It's pretty basic stuff, but it, you know, you don't want anybody to cheat it. So if I take the supplies and be on my way, Talk to Torben, and this will give you these these supplies, right? Gives you hammer, right, and all that stuff. I don't want the player to be able to do this over and over again, so that's why I put it inside a quest. Talk to Torben, take the quest. That's Torben. Nice. Interact. Now I've gotten all that stuff. I can't fit it all in my inventory because I've got all that stuff in my inventory. But there, you can see I've gotten pretty much most of it, right? Now, if I try to go back, right? If I try to go back and do that again, it doesn't let me do it. And here, you can see, now it's time to head out. Good luck, Viking warrior, right? And here, blue, color blue, now it's time to head out. You can see that I've put in conditions. So conditions, quest not finished, greeter, right? And if we go to my quest database, you can see what I've done here. Ah, greeter, okay. So. This is just a, I've just made a simple talk quest. So once you click on the dialogue, interacted with him, the quest is complete, and then that's it. It's not accessible anymore for that player. So they can only get the stuff once. And then from there, they go and they start the story. They take the narration. So I have come to my next NPC and I'm gonna click on him to complete the quest that I just got. So that quest is done. Now it's a new interaction 
with a new NPC, because you can't change the initial response, which is something I'm going to ask about as well. So I have a neutral kind of response for anyone, whether they've completed quests from this NPC before or not. That way I can go from that and then direct the player based on the choices they've made. So here I have a whole bunch of different uh, choices based on choices that they've made. So you arrive here and you're given, I'm on a quest or I can, can I buy you a pint, right? I'm going to buy him a round. Buy him a pint. Okay, collect a tankard. I'm going to go over here. Will it be hot shot? I'm going to buy a stein of mead for my good friend Dwer Dangle. Okay, it says that I've completed it. You can see it, right? Go back. Give Dwer Dangle his first pint. So there you go. You've bought him a pint. There's a reason for that. I'm not going to spoil it. If you want to continue the main quest, you click on I'm on a quest. Oh, quest now is it? Fuck up all begin right. So now we're given a choice, and I didn't change the colors back to red, but basically you can choose to just go along and be peaceful and not mess around, and then click that, or you can give yourself the choice. Right. So instead of... Now it gives you one more choice. You can either back out, listen to his drunk drunken ramblings without torture, or interrogate. Use excessive force with every sharp blade you have to extract the information you need. Obviously, there's no interrogation mechanic in this game. I can't kill this NPC, because it's just an NPC. But I'm doing this because I want to create a choice for the player. Now, it's giving me a quest. I can use this them doing this quest as a callback later. So if they interrogated this guy... Please! Now, if you saw the screen went red, it gave me damage. It's minor damage. But I wanted the player to have a minor consequence other than that. And they're not receiving a lot of coins or any Battle Pass XP. So they do this, right? They have to now talk to him again, which is just interacting. So I finished Interrogate. You goddamn bastard, I told you everything I know. Why did you have to break my pinky toes? Right. And I can't buy him a pint anymore because I interrogated him. So because I was an asshole to this NPC, it's removed an option for being nice to him anymore. There could be some reason for that. Who knows? So this is the only option. I can always click escape, but it's going to give me the same prompt. Spits blood on the floor. Now, he tells me the location of the healing tavern. Please let me go. Continue to the tavern or leave. Now, if I click leave, what's it going to do? It's blood on floor. It's going to send me back. I, it wants me to get to the next point, to the next quest. I can't give the quest until the player has gotten to this point. I'm not going to give the player the quest. I want them to accept it. That way I can use that as a mechanic going forward. So continue to the tower and it's giving me, obviously my map is exposed here, but it would be pinging in a location where I probably haven't been yet. Continue to the tavern. And then if I accept this quest, I've set it up for this narration to begin. Take the quest and go on my merry way. So now that I've done all that, if I go back, this is the only option I'm given. I've taken the quests. I've made the conditions in here. So if 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 you look, here are the conditions and there are quite a few because I've had to do so many checks. So when you first here, I'm here on a quest. The condition is, well, you haven't finished the next quest after this. You haven't finished the bad quest. Can I come here and, and interacted and already interrogated him? Or, and you haven't finished the good quest either. And you need to make sure that you have at least finished the first quest, which is main quest zero, and that you don't actually actively have the next quest trying to like, you know, cheese the system. That's a lot. It's probably too many conditions that are necessary, but I was just trying to cover my bases to make sure that the player wasn't allowed to redo any of these options again. It's supposed to be a one-time thing. They go in, they leave, they move on to the next thing. So that's basically what I've done here. I would have to reload the quests and change their, um, their cooldowns or wait to show you what the op other option is. But basically, I've used that and set that up so when you 
make that choice, that choice, that quest, those quests that you've completed, interrogate Dwerdingle, now has an impact later on in the story. So maybe you might get a different quest from an NPC because you did something bad. Maybe that choice makes it so you can't get a quest or something is way harder later. I don't know. So from this point, again, narratively, if I'm just thinking about this as a narrative construct, this now I've got the player going to this location that they've just gotten pin, pinged from their map. So in my world, I've made it so there's multiple bridges spanning across here. You know, it's still an adventure game. It's still Valheim. You're still supposed to be building a, a settlement somewhere. But, you know, it adds this other element of gameplay in it, which is, I think, pretty fun. Okay, so I've spoken to Dwer Dingle. I've gotten the quest to go speak to Balrock here at the Healing Tavern. Now I'm going to go inside. This is yet to be finished. There's more. I'm going to put some music and some ambiance in here, but that's not done yet. But speaking to Balrock, right? Where's my shake, you twit? So I have the same thing. I have properties. Shake, muck, shake Balrock awake. And that will send you to the quest to then wake up Balrock. And the reason I do this is to make sure, again, that the player can't keep doing this over and over again, because by completing these, these this little quest line right here, you get something that will help you later on. Right, I need to restart the quest. I put this in because if you cancel the quest, you need to restart it. So I can't do that because I haven't finished that. So I'm going to shake Balrock awake. Shake this hulking armor clad giant so you can get some answers. And it's just it's just a talk quest. It's just talking to him again. But I do that so I can get the prompts I want for the player when they start the quest up. So I'll interact. Who in Baldur's Tain to you? Oh, sent by the king, eh? What's that you say? You're also an asshole? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, I know you didn't say that. Don't say much of anything, do you? Well, look, I've heard about the Duke gone missing. So now I've got a choice. Let's say I let's say I walk away, right? Let's say I walk away, or let's say I I've already done I haven't completed any you know the rest of these quests. But I have awakened Balrock, and it's given me that check. So you have awakened Balrock is. Condition quest finish, wake Balrock up, which is a quest. So it's always going to come back and say, I've completed that quest, as long as that quest doesn't have like a really short cooldown. I've always completed that quest. Now I'll always get this prompt. So I've awakened Balrock. Here's the dialogue. Go and fe fetch Balrock his muckshake from the bar, right? So here's the muckshake quest. It's not just a boar. I've got his character spawning in through quest events if I complete this quest. So I go to the bar, get a muck shake, come back. What in? Who left the doors open? Crocodile. Give Balrock his muck shake, right? That muck shake was delicious. Now, it's time to get going. So because I left during that exchange, I'm able to restart the quest. Um, and I left that option in because of this exact situation. Someone didn't finish the dialogue and goes back. What are they supposed to do? They're, the conditions need to be met. So I left this option so they can start the quest over. The, now it's pinging the tower. It's pinging the bridge to take me to the tower. Uh, it's actually long, wrong location. It's supposed to be down here. So I got to fix that. But sounds good. Let's get going. I'm not ready. You can come back. Sounds good. Let's go. Now I take this quest. With Balrock at your side, you have been given an inside scoop as to where the Duke might be shacked up. Okay. You're supposed to get Balrock as as a companion, basically. Um, when you when you get the muck shake. It's supposed to spawn him in. I don't know exactly why it wasn't, but that's not really a problem right now. Come here. Slow down. I did increase his speed slightly to make him 
keep up a little faster, and he probably needs to lower his health because it's way too much. But basically, you take him, you go, you know, down here to the. I'm just, I'm just teleporting to make it faster. Come on, let's go. Come on. Yeah, come on. Let's go. So you can take him with you. Uh, obviously, it's a little easier when he is not on a ship because he doesn't just go randomly chasing every bad guy. 